Olathe, Kansas is hands down one of the most popular suburbs in the Kansas City area for a lot of reasons, a lot of reasons that people love living there. There are also a lot of people that just cannot stand it, people that choose to avoid it at all costs, people that move out of Olathe after living there for just a short time. And in this video, we're going to break down all of those reasons that people can't stand it. If you stay until the end, we'll talk about the number one reason that people are being driven away from living in Olathe, Kansas. Just a heads up, these are not in any particular order. So the first one that we'll cover is car dependency. See, Olathe is pretty spread out. It's not quite as big as its next door neighbor, Overland Park, and it's not quite as small as Lenexa just to its north, but it is fairly geographically spacious. It's a big city and it's constantly developing and you can see a ton of green space on the map. And we'll talk a little bit about that later in this video, but one of the issues that comes up time and time again with people who live in Olathe is that you need a car. You absolutely need one. There's not really any public transportation that's gonna get you to all the places that you would most likely need to go living in one city. And while many people live in Olathe and really have no need to go uh, to downtown Kansas City or any surrounding cities, that's most likely something you're gonna want the option to do. So having a car is pretty much the only way that's gonna happen. Now, if, if car dependency is something that you don't wanna deal with, then Kansas just might not be it. Kansas City might not be the best place. And, and that's because the only place that you can really live without a car in Kansas City is in Kansas City, Kansas City proper. And even then the public transportation is not that great. So while Olathe is spread out, this is a problem that plagues a lot of the suburbs on the Kansas and Missouri side. The only way to solve it is to pick another big city or live in downtown Kansas City where everything that you need is near you. But once you've got a car, traffic, not that big of a deal. You're gonna be able to get from one place to another relatively quickly. Complaint number two I hear about Olathe is that it's too far south and west of Kansas City proper meaning Kansas City, Missouri. Now you're looking at about 23 minutes of driving to Kansas City, Missouri in downtown Kansas City, about 43 minutes to the airport. Not all too bad. Traffic, not that big of a deal. Again, that's once you've got the car, then getting around gets a lot easier. You are still going to have to drive that 20, 23 minutes if you do want to go downtown. So if you see yourself being there or needing to be on the Missouri side quite frequently, Olathe is probably not it for you. And for a lot of people who live in Northeast Johnson County, that's the case. They like being able to cross state line, get to the Missouri side pretty quickly while still being in a in one of the nice suburbs on the Kansas side. But there are also a lot of people, and you might be one of them, that has no need to go to downtown Kansas City. A couple things to think about. One, a lot of office space, which previously would have a lot of people going to downtown Kansas City, a lot of that office space has migrated over to the Kansas side. A lot of it is in Johnson County, and specifically in Overland Park, which is your next door neighbor if you're living in Olathe. So that eliminates one huge need. The second is that Olathe is its own self-contained city. Kind of like we talked about previously, everything that you possibly could need can be found in Olathe. If it can't be found in Olathe, you can find it next door in Overland Park. And if you can't find it at Overland Park, I don't know where, where else it would exist, but chances are one of the many other suburbs on the Kansas side has you covered. So if you see being downtown or needing to get to the Missouri side quite frequently, Olathe is probably not it. But if that's not something that you have an issue with, Olathe could certainly be an excellent choice. Complaint number three is that Olathe does not have that many locally owned businesses and that it's drowning in big chain stores. Here's a review to give you some context. Says, I find it very plain and bland. No unique coffee shops except for Starbucks. It says, very few locally owned businesses or restaurants, no art fairs or festivals, no history or historical sites, and kind of continues to go on and on and on. Everybody's got their different opinion, but Olathe, there is some truth in this one. Olathe, this is mostly because of how it developed through history. Olathe predates the existence of Kansas, and that's because it was a major transportation hub. You've got the California, Santa Fe, and Oregon trails all cutting through Olathe. So it predates the existence of Kansas for that reason. Most of the growth that Olathe saw was in the last half of the 1900s and really the last decade or two here in Kansas City. And that's because the highway connected Olathe to downtown Kansas City and then it stopped being just a transportation hub. People started living there full time. Well, a lot of this recent development has seen a lot of big chain stores come into Olathe. So I get where they're coming from with this problem. But keep in mind, this is not the last nail in the coffin for a lot of people. There are many local own businesses still in Olathe. And if that's a really big deal breaker and you just want to be surrounded by locally owned businesses, I get it. There are plenty other suburbs in the Kansas City area. So I'm going to give you the top five fan favorites living in Olathe, restaurants, things to do. 
you've got Kansas City Joe's Barbecue. This is a locally owned chain store. This is the first one it still exists. It started in a gas station off of 47th Street, which is on the Kansas side, but close to Kansas City, Missouri. There are lines constantly out the back. So over the last like 10 to 15 years, they've started expanding to several different stores in the Kansas City area. This just happens to be a really popular one. If you do go there, the Z-Man, it's a fan favorite. It's hard to go wrong with that one. Now, number two, you've got Austin's Bar and Grill in South Olathe. It has phenomenal reviews. It seems packed and busy all the time. If you're trying to catch up a game with the friends or maybe get a drink, this would be one of the places to go. Another one to go is a locally owned chain store here in Kansas City, which is Johnny's Tavern. Original one started in Lawrence, Kansas, and they've got a couple locations spread throughout the Kansas area. Area. This would be another place to check out. You've got Silas and Maddie's ice cream. This is a slam dunk, a just one of the most popular ice cream places that you could go in Johnson County. And then the last one is Poor Coffee House. If you're looking for a locally owned business, locally owned coffee shop, this is your place to go. Amazing pastries and some excellent blends of coffee. Number four, and we kind of touched on this previously, is the development. There's been a lot of growth in the city of Olathe, and here's a review to give you some context. It says, it's a growing city that is ever-changing and constantly being fixed and more buildings put up. Plenty of schools that are safe and good education, difficult to travel across town due to traffic buildup and the spread out layout. The roads are always kept up to date. Seems to be a lot of construction that causes more traffic. So this kind of goes hand in hand with the car dependency. Lathe is very spread out, but their issue in this review seems to be that they're constantly repairing the roads, which is another common complaint that I see. Now, there's a flip side of this, which is which is it's a good thing. I'm glad they're repairing the roads so they don't look like the pothole ridden roads in Kansas City, Missouri. But I get I get the problem with this, which is that there might be delays, it might get make it more difficult to get around town in an already spread out city. But again, you're looking 10 to 15 minutes to get to most places that you'd like to go. And the development, I think, is a good thing, especially if you're going to buy a home and you plan on living there for like 10 to 15 years. You're going to see a lot of appreciation just because of how quick the city is currently growing. And keep in mind, there's still a lot of room to go. I mean, they've got decades left of home building in Olathe as they start to expand and develop some previously undeveloped parcels of land that are that are up for sale on the market that you can see right alongside single family homes. So if you're looking for the best new home communities, most of the new homes that you can find in Johnson County, most of them are in Olathe. I'll link my whole video to new home communities in Olathe. If you have any questions about it or you want like the, the hand-picked selection of the top three that fit your needs and your price point, go ahead and send me a message below. I'll get on it, I'll get right back to you and we'll set you up for success. Number five, trains and railroads. The railroad, is very, very popular in Olathe. There are upwards of 80 trains that are going through there every single day. And this all relates back to what we talked about before, which is it's a huge transportation hub. We had the Santa Fe, Oregon, California trails right there. The railroad, uh, very heavily trafficked. Few slow train cars are going through there every single hour, multiple times every single hour. So in your head, you're probably wondering, well, okay, so it's spread out. I need a car. They're constantly repairing the roads. And now I've got to worry about the railroad roads. Well, it's not that bad. The city's made a few adjustments over the last couple decades that have been tremendous. One of them happened in 2008. They spent about $42 million to elevate critical railroad crossings so that people weren't just like stuck waiting for the, the slow and long train cars to finally get past so that cars could go to and from. Keep in mind, this cuts through the middle of the city of Olathe. So that was previously a huge problem, significant improvements since then. The second thing that the city of Olathe has done is that they've launched the Downtown Quiet Zone project, which eliminated the previous regulation that would require railroad conductors to ring that annoying bell several times as each of these trains passed every single hour. So now it's peace and quiet. They're going nice and slow. The crossroads have been elevated so that cars can get to and from, and it's now no longer that big of a deal. But if you are buying a home, just, just go and go and see what it's like multiple times throughout the day so you can see if this is going to be something that's going to plague you. Is there going to be noise? I know they're going slower, but there are some new home communities like that are right near those train tracks. So it's just something to be aware of. So if the constant road maintenance, the spread out streets and, and, and places in Olathe and the railroads going by several times an hour, if that's not enough for you, we've got two airports, South Olathe, that you should know about. 
And again, I, I'm exaggerating. They're not that big of a deal. There's not a ton of noise pollution. You'll see the planes going to and from. If you've got younger kids, it's going to be cool because they can see the, the very cool planes going to and from several times a day, but you're not going to hear them. It's really not going to impact you unless you're in like the really southern edges of Olathe. So in Gardner, which is directly south and west of Olathe, you've got the new Century Airport. Uh, again, small airport, not a ton of activity happening there, but you will see planes going to and from throughout the day. This is where the Kansas City Air Show is held. That is an incredible one. You should certainly take a look at it if that's something that you're interested in. You'll see some barnstorming, like what they used to do when airplanes first came out in like the 1900s. Very cool. They'll do all the all the crazy tricks and flips in the air, flying upside down. Something to certainly check out. But unless you're that far south in Olathe, this is not even a concern to worry about. The other airport that you should know about, though, that is closer and does have some noise pollution, is the Johnson County Executive Airport. This is just north of Heritage Park. It is in Olathe, but it is close to the edge of Olathe and Overland Park. There are several more reports of noise and airplanes flying overhead that are just too low and close to residential areas. Here's a review that I found that was kind of funny. It said, writing this review mainly to counter all the idiots that bought a house near an airport and think that the airport should move. Give me a break. <laughs> I think this person hit the nail on the head perfectly. You gotta be picky about where you're buying a home. If this is not something that you can stomach, this is not the place that you should be buying a home. Again, there's not gonna be a ton of noise pollution and they're really not flying as low as I'm making it sound like these planes are flying. Not gonna be that big of a deal. But if that's something you don't wanna deal with, then just go to go somewhere to like the middle of Olathe or North Olathe, maybe Cedar Creek that's tucked in the corner, Northeast Olathe. Now, if you're really concerned about being near the airports or being near the railroads, go ahead, reach out to me, give me a call. I'll make sure that when you buy a home, it is not a problem that you have to deal with. Number seven is that Olathe is very family friendly and family focused. Now, if you are a working professional, maybe a younger person, maybe a single new to the city looking to meet people, Leith is probably not the best place for you, especially if you value like the nightlife and kind of what you can find closer to downtown Kansas City. And that's because people who are moving to Olathe primarily moving there because they've got a family, they want to be in the good Olathe school district, and they want to be in a really safe community with other families around them that are that are very like them. You've got a lot of youth sports going on in Olathe. That's kind of the scene and the environment you'll be around comes down to personal preference, but if you are younger, maybe working professional, or maybe you're new to the city, looking to make friends around your same age and you're a younger person, being closer to the city in any city, not just Kansas, is usually what you're gonna be after. So some places to look into, if that's you, look into Waldo, Brookside, River Market, Crossroads, Westport. There are several other little neighborhoods and, and places to live in the Kansas City, Missouri area. If you do wanna stay on the Kansas side, you could look at Westwood and Westwood Hills. Those are gonna be a little bit more expensive than let's say Roland Park and Mission, which are two popular ones because they're close to Kansas City, but they're also close to like KU Med and many of the other employers that are in like central Kansas City. Number eight is the divide between new parts of Olathe and old parts of Olathe. And this is a problem that you'll see in a lot of very quickly growing cities and a lot of cities that are just older, where like half of the city was developed way back in the late 1900s. And most of the newer parts of the city were developed in the last like 10 to 20 years. And that's kind of what you'll find in Olathe. So here's a review to give you some context. It says, I love how I live in a nice, clean, safe neighborhood. However, I live in the Northwest portion of Olathe. Much of the rest is viewed quite poorly. I would like to see an effort made to improve the worst neighborhoods and shopping malls in Olathe before new locations are developed. And it kind of goes on and on and on. It says it's isolated from Kansas City's main attractions. Da, 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 da. Well, we've already kind of covered that. Again, if you are living in Olathe, most likely it's because you don't have a recurring need on a daily basis to go to downtown Kansas City. But this can certainly be an issue if you do find yourself in one of the older parts of Olathe that the city is not taking as good of care of or is just not quite focused on as much as some of the newer parts of the city. All comes down to personal preferences. I just wanted to throw that out there. If you do have a preference and you, you want to make sure you're, on a, you're in a good area of Olathe, love to help you out. All my contact info is below. Give me a, give me a call, send me an email, and we'll, we'll get on it and make sure that you're in the part of Olathe that you're really looking for and matches your lifestyle. So remember at the beginning of this video when I said there's like one thing, there's one thing specifically 
that has people who live and move to Olathe leaving as quickly as they can. It's a complaint that Olathe is boring. Here's a review to shed some light on it. It says, not much to do around. Most kids bored out of their minds resort to crime and drugs. Not much family entertainment wise would have to go outside of Olathe. This is true for some people, but keep in mind there are a lot of people that love living in Olathe. This isn't everybody, but it just comes down to personal preferences. And are the kids doing drugs? Most likely not. Of course, you've got some, there's always some bad apples in the, in the basket, but this is not everybody. And the way that Olathe the structure, kind of what we talked about previously, is that most of the kids that would be at the age that would be conducive to be doing drugs are in school and they're academically engaged because of the really good schools there. They've got a ton of extracurricular activities and youth sports is a big thing. So the way that the city and the academics are structured are disincentivize the drugs completely. I don't think that's that big of a deal. So here's the second review that'll give you even more of an idea. It says, despite Olathe being above average in the safety aspect of a town, there's not a lot of things that make it special. There's not a restaurant store or landmark that people travel here for. <laughs> okay, jo joking aside, well, clearly this person has, has just not visited Bass Pro Shops, which you can find in Olathe. And while I'm saying that sarcastically and completely joking, this is fair. It comes down to personal preferences and what you value. I think there are some really cool things that are happening in Olathe, but I also get that it's not for everybody. So some things that you can do next. This video will tell you the top 13 reasons why people love living in Olathe, from the farmer's market to Lake Olathe, the man-made beach, and even the floating obstacle course. I'll link this video right here that'll give you an overview of what it's like to live in Olathe, what the schools are like, where it's located, the shops, restaurants, parks, and even the real estate, and the cost of living there. And of course, if you have any few further questions, you're looking for like the, the specific area, the best place to buy a home in the Kansas City suburbs, I'd love to give you a, a suggestion of like the top three that fit exactly what you're looking for. So all my contact info is below. Give me a call, send me a text or an email, I'll get right back to you. We'll pull up the map, we'll answer all your questions, and we'll make sure you're in an area that's not right next to the railroad or having planes fly overhead at really low altitudes. Make sure we get the perfect area for you. So go ahead, reach out to me. I'm here to help. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something from it and I've earned your trust and you liked it, hit that like button so other people see it, subscribe so you see future videos, and I'll see you on the next one.